Okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, today we have our very own uh, René Ortega Minacata. René obtained his undergraduate uh, degree in physics from the University of Guadalajara and then did his uh, postgraduate studies in, at the University of Guanajuato, obtaining his PhD in 2015. And then he was a postdoctoral fellow uh, at the Observatorio de Balongo in Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and at the Institute of Astronomy of UNAM in Mexico City. Um, his, his topic uh, of research was the uh, chemical abundances in the interstellar medium of galaxies. And of course, René has always been involved in outreach activities. He has teaching, teaching experience. And in 2019, he joined uh, IRIA uh, in the Department of Public Outreach and Scientific Communication uh, just in time for the pandemic. So uh, today he will tell us about his adventures uh, organizing and, and, and leading many outreach activities. Okay, so René, uh, whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, Vicente and everybody. Uh, as always, it is a little bit weird to, to talk to the camera instead of talking to anybody, anybody in person. Uh, but uh, after a year of doing basically this online, I, I kind of, uh, I'm used to talk to the camera. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story of what happened when they told us to to work from home when they told when they told us one year ago that we should work from from home and how we moved everything we did uh, with people uh, to the online world. Uh, okay, so and, and I and I hope I can make this not as boring <laughs> as it may sound, uh, but okay, the, the, I'm going to try to make a story of this. So as you uh, may already know, <laughs> uh, a, a year ago, uh, exactly on March 12th, and I, and I put the date because it's actually my birthday on March the 12th, uh, it was the first time that UNAM uh, specifically said that uh, uh, massive uh, events with people should be avoided. Uh, they didn't even consider cutting classes uh, at this date, that, which is incredible uh, in, in hindsight, but okay. <laughs> so part of the story is that I had, I had been here in Morelia only for six months. Uh, I, I came here in September 2019 and I started um, like diving, I, I, I think, I feel like I took a dive into the work because the, in the second half of the year, all the big events like Noche de las Estrellas and, and, the, and the basic astronomy course uh, are done. Uh, and also the, the movie cycle. So all of that is in the last half of the year, especially in the last four months of the year, uh, and then dived into that. So in the beginning of 2020, I was just getting used to all the work. And we had a big plan in, in 2020 to try to, to do as much as possible outside of Morelia. Uh, I, I felt that uh, even though a lot of, a lot of uh, outreach was being done before outside of Morelia, I felt that uh, some of the big things like Noche de las Estrellas and the Curso and etc. were uh, only for people in Morelia. So I was trying to put emphasis in doing more outside uh, of Morelia and in, in different uh, municipalities of the state. So of course, it, there came March 2020 and all those plans went to the trash <laughs> and we had to do something new. So. Uh, the story goes like this. The last in-person thing we did was March 13 and 14, oh, uh, a bit over a year ago. Uh, and then we already, uh, and then UNAM told us no more classes, which meant canceling all in-person activities. Uh, uh, for us, for outreach, that's critical because basically everything we did outside social media posts was in-person. So we had to start thinking how to move everything online. So in the first, in the first few days, um, which was uh, the next week after this, uh, 17 to 20 of March last year, 
uh, we just canceled everything. Uh, we uh, we really didn't know what uh, what was happening. Uh, I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen. To be honest, I even thought that the pandemic would like would last like three weeks. Honestly, that, that in I, I was very stupid at the time, <laughs> and uh, and I remember uh, and Rafa. Who I don't know if he's if he's connected by now, but I remember Rafa telling me, uh, the, "This is going to be at least until December," and I, and, and I told him, "No, it, 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 it's not going to happen. It, it's uh, we're going to be back after after you know after the spring holiday, uh, which of course it didn't happen." Uh, but the, the first online thing we did was uh, the, the Viernes Astronomia talk in March. I remember that um, uh, it was supposed to be uh, Gilberto's talk, but we talked with him. So Bernardo would do it because it was basically an experiment. We had never done something as an almost nothing as an online only event. We have had a couple of online only events before, but these were Q and A sessions live on Facebook, which don't really need a lot of preparation. Uh, we just we just announced it in one post and then put uh, set up the computer and 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 put some very uh, um, like well some graduate students, <laughs> voluntary graduate students, uh, which we had to convince a little bit <laughs> to. Uh, in front of the camera and talk to people uh, uh, asking questions in the comment boxes. Um, so uh, that, but with Viernes Astronomia, it was different because uh, it was not only because it was a talk, but we had kind of a routine for it. We, we had uh, the question session, then we had telescope observation, uh, and then we had, we had uh, the gifts for people. And we didn't really know how to, to do the, uh, the event itself, like the dynamic. So in the beginning, we just did the talk and the questions, and that was it. Um, so Bernardo did it and, it, and it worked very well. Um, we tried uh, the same approach to, uh, to promote the talk, which is talking to local media, uh, radio, TV, et cetera, and it worked. So we continue doing that afterwards. So this was this was the beginning, uh, and the beginning was actually the ugly. People say that when we, you talk about good and bad stuff, or the good side and bad side of things, that you just start with the good. So people are like happy, and then and then when you talk about the bad things, people already heard the good things. But if I want to make the story true. I have to start with, with the ugly, um, because in the beginning, there was very high uncertainty, and this was very, very difficult, at least for me. So uh, the, the first four months from March to the beginning of July, before the summer holidays, uh, it was very unpredictable. We were learning sometimes week by week if the, if the lockdown would continue. And then maybe not week, uh, by May, it wasn't week by, by week, it was like month by month or three weeks by three weeks, but there wasn't really any horizon on what would happen in, in, in the, not even long-term, like in the next couple of months. So uh, this uncertainty was really ugly in, 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 in the sense that we, we kind of, at that moment, I felt we were improvising. Uh, improv to improvise something sounds uh, like we were not prepared. So, and I actually changed this slide because I, I, I had put, we improvised, and then I changed it and I put, we used prior experience and quickly learned new tools, <laughs> which is, which is a, a polite version of saying that we improvised. Uh, but <laughs> improv improvising means that you actually do take uh, a, in, into consideration what you know. And we already knew how to do online things. We just hadn't done them. Uh, and we knew a couple of tools to do them. So we started learning new things. So in the first semester, we, we had, uh, we did uh, everything on Facebook. And then we learned new, new things uh, and started doing Facebook and YouTube at the same time. 
uh, and our main event was Viernes Astronomia. This was our main event before the pandemic, and this continues to be our main event. But this is a monthly event, so the, the, we needed a way to put everything that we were doing before uh, in online format. So uh, uh, we started doing a weekly events. Uh, we started doing the astronomy news uh, once a week and uh, the activities for children. Uh, the, the, we, we already had a lot of material and, and, and experience on doing activities with children. And uh, the thing was just moving it in front of the camera, uh, which sometimes meant having two cameras, one for the material and, and one for the face and showing things up. Um, uh, but, but it worked, we, we started having, uh, and, and this is very important, with these weekly things in the months that people were really inside their houses, that the, the, the lockdown was kind of hard. Uh, if you remember, uh, everything was closed. There, there were even a few weeks that, that I couldn't even go take a photocopy because, because of the, the, uh, everything was closed, even the office depot and, and places like that uh, were closed. So uh, in those months, people really turned online. Uh, so we built new audience and, and this is something uh, I, I mentioned it now that I'm talking about the ugly, but it's kind of a good thing. And I'm going to touch on audience building and, and what happens with the online audience a little bit more uh, later in, the, in, in this uh, presentation, in this talk. Uh, but these weekly things uh, in the weeks that people was completely locked down uh, helped to, to build an online presence. Uh, we have an online presence, but as uh, as posting information and as posting uh, announcements for in-person activities. And even if those posts are seen somewhere else, like outside of Morelia, in other parts of the state, in other parts of the country, uh, when you are announcing an, uh, an in-person event, only people from here can attend. Uh, so uh, th uh, these weekly events helped change that perception that, that our social media pages were, uh, were, were places where lo local events were announced. And uh, instead, uh, e e online events were held where everybody could attend. So um, uh, these weekly events, uh, well, we also have a, an astronomy talk every week with people from, from, from you, from people from the Institute. Uh, researchers, postdocs, and uh, students, grad students, uh, and some special events. Uh, with, these weren't weekly, these were more or less monthly, along with uh, Viennese Astronomy, which is also a monthly event. So um, uh, this, this building on experience uh, helped uh, go through the ugly part, which was the high uncertainty months. Uh, which, by the way, were also ugly for me because I, I well, I, lockdown was very hard on me, and and I'm not good with handling uncertainty, so I, I fell into a kind of a hard depression and uh, that I tried to hide every time I, I was in front of the camera with people, uh, uh, which uh, which was a little bit difficult during those months. L later on, I, I I had some help and and got out of it. Uh, so I, 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 and I learned to put on a good face on the camera, uh, which, which is something that, that we all need to do nowadays. Um, so uh, the, 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 when the uncertainty part, which was the ugly part passed, then things started to stabilize, especially after the holidays. Uh, one of the things, and I, and I think I forgot to put it on the slide, but one of the things that helped stabilize everything was actually the use of StreamYard. The, the, the online tool that we're using for the online transmissions. Uh, the, uh, because a StreamYard is very, very easy to use. And please, I'm not doing advertisement for them. They, they, uh, 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 I mean, this is not a paid announcement or something like that. Uh, but it was really something that helped uh, because we can do, it's very easy to use. Uh, it looks more professional. Uh, and it helped, I mean, it allows to transmit at the same time 
in, in several social media at the same time, simultaneous, uh, which meant we could transmit on YouTube as well and on Twitter as well at the same time, which we started doing, and then also helped build collaborations with other people. For example, starting uh, in, from September last year, um, we have been simultaneously uh, broadcasting not only to our own social media, but to other four um, uh, astronomy outreach groups uh, and astronomical societies in different parts of the country. Uh, these collaborations have really helped uh, with this audience building that I was talking about before, uh, especially audience that is outside of Pinchacan. Uh, uh, before the pandemic, about half of the people that liked our face, our Facebook page, were people from Michoacan. And currently, one year after, uh, the, 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 the highest number of, no, no, that's, a, that's badly worded. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Uh, the place where we are most watched is actually Mexico City, which is more in line to the population of the country. Uh, the, uh, and, and Michoacan is like in fourth place which is still high considering the population of Michoacan compared to other states. Uh, but, uh, but we have become a more national uh, entity in terms of our social media uh, presence. Uh, and, and this was in part in, due to the, the constant activities we did in the ugly period, uh, but also in this good uh, uh, stabilization period uh, we move the weekly events to monthly events. Uh, <clears throat> apart from Viernes de Astronomía, which, which I, I again is the main thing we do, uh, well, the main event, uh, we move the the, mon the ast astronomy news to a monthly event. Uh, that also uh, helped stabilize it because weekly sometimes uh, I, I had to repeat, so not repeat, but talk about things that I had already talked about before. Um, uh, and, and it became very tiring to do it to do three or four online online transmissions every week. Um, and for the uh, activities for children, we are we had prepared about twelve or thirteen of them, uh, which was more or less the number of weeks we had <laughs> in the audio period. So uh, we continue to do it monthly until December, and in 2021 we have suspended it. Um, uh, especially because we tried to focus more on schools. And I'm going to talk about schools a little bit uh, later, not in the good part, but in the difficult part, because it, that has been very difficult to do. Uh, but so we suspended it in, in December because this year we wanted to focus more on schools. I'm going to leave it like that at this moment on this topic of schools, and I'm going to go back to it later. Uh, and we also did a lot of special events. Uh, we continued with Q&As, and, and these were like one or two a month, so I put it like a, 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 as monthly events. Uh, we, we, we did Q&As, we did uh, uh, telescope observations. When I say virtual, I mean we trans, uh, transmitted online, uh, especially of the sun and the moon, uh, but also of other events like uh, eclipses, the uh, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, and mo mo uh, most recently, uh, the Messier Marathon. Uh, I'm going to talk about specifically about this uh, a little bit more afterwards. Uh, we did conversation panels, interviews, um, uh, virtual press conferences, uh, uh, mo the movie cycle. Uh, I put it in plural because it's the movie cycle that we mainly organize, which is the, the one in September, uh, which is called La Ciencia en el Septimo Arte. But, but we also uh, participated in other movie cycles that are organized by uh, uh, other uh, other people in the campus, uh, and the, the basic astronomy course, and I'm going to talk about that more later on. So about audience, uh, I have already said this last line, but but I have I, I want to stress this because we had we also start, started to build some international audience. Uh, this is difficult to measure. Uh, 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 well, no, let me rephrase that. The evolution of this is difficult to measure. Uh, because other than, than constantly getting into the uh, statistics part of the social media pages and getting the numbers of them, uh, other than that, 
there's no much other way to know how how much people from other places are connecting to your transmissions uh, live because the the um, the statistics tell you how, how much people follow you or how many people have seen the the video even afterwards uh, but uh, for the online moment the when when the i mean for the live moment when the uh, the event is live at that time it's very difficult to know so uh, i started asking people to leave a comment from where they they are uh, following us um, and they from there from where they are watching the event uh, uh, and this is important for two reasons uh, first because we can know from from where people are connected live uh, and also because the more comments a post has, uh, the more it is shown to, to new people based on interests, uh, or the more it is shown at the top of the news feed of people that already follow you or, or uh, people that share it, share it in, in their news feed. Uh, this is particularly important in Facebook that because the algorithm is a black box and there's no control of what the algorithm does, uh, but in general, uh, the, the the algorithm works in a way that the more posts and the more shares a post has, the the more it is shown to other people. So so it helps things uh, become viral. But if you don't pass a certain amount of people that share it and comment, it is not not going to be shown. Uh, so uh, it is important to encourage uh, audience participation to tell them uh, explicitly to comment. And so a way to do this is asking them things. So that's why I always start telling people. Uh, I always start the online events telling people to to comment where they are from, because I can measure that and I can also encourage commenting. Uh, if I uh, and I have done the experiment of not telling people to to comment. And we receive very few comments uh, uh, if you don't tell them to comment. So uh, the, uh, the, this, is, this is something that we have learned during this year. This is something I had an idea about uh, because of previous experience I had before coming to Morelia. Uh, but this is something that I have learned during the pandemic. Uh, so it's part of the good thing. So uh, uh, let, me, let me go forward. Okay, so this is a, a, a kind of a bullet point summary of uh, what we've done online uh, during this year. And this year, I mean like March to March, more or less. Uh, so uh, it's a, a full year of Viernes Astronomia, which is 10 talks. Uh, the next one is, is tomorrow. So it, it's going to be the 11th online talk of Viernes Astronomia. Uh, the the movie cycle, the, the one that we that we organize, uh, we did that one last year, um, asking people to watch the film in their homes, in streaming services by themselves, and then asking them to connect with us for the comments. This worked well, and we had um, more or less the same amount of people in attendance that we would have in the in the in the movie theater. Uh, but uh, these people were not mainly from Morelia. These were people mainly from other places. Uh, the amount of people from Morelia the, uh, was not a majority. Uh, so th this, this puts a clear uh, image of um, how the audience uh, changed during the months because this Ciclo de Cine, uh, this movie cycle was uh, in September. So in the first six months, we already had new audience from other places. Uh, and also uh, uh, about audience, I'm, I'm, going, I'm talking a lot about audience, but uh, when you are online only, audience is very, a very important thing. Uh, so uh, another point about audience uh, that the, the movie cycle exemplifies is that uh, the, the people that goes to uh, that, that wants to connect to an online event is not the same people that would go to an in-person event, even if it is the same event. Uh, uh, the, we, we have seen this also in Viernes Astronomia. For example, in Viernes Astronomia, uh, a large proportion of the in-person audience were students. 
uh, particularly students from NS and from the Universidad Michoacana. Uh, and uh, after uh, moving to online, uh, it, uh, the audience is more diverse. Uh, it's, it, it's not monolithic at all. It's very, very diverse. Uh, and, but we don't have that much uh, students from NS. When we ask people to comment where they're from, most of the comments tell us they're from elsewhere, not from Michoacan. Uh, and we know that most of the students of NS are from Michoacan, may, may, maybe not from Morelia, but, but from Michoacan in general. Um, so uh, the, uh, we, well, the audience are, are changing and are evolving. Um, okay, I'm going to move on. Um, for, we also did the Curso de Astronomía Básica, the basic astronomy course that we used to do in, in presence, I mean, in person uh, at IDEA, like spe specifically there last, not last year, the, the year before in 2019, we had about 40 people, uh, which I think it's a very good thing considering that Morelia is not a very big city. Uh, and it, that, and that, that course had, had been um, offered in, in person uh, in prior years. So you need new local people every year that are interested in the course. Uh, but when we moved this online uh, for, for, for 2020, uh, we had a lot of response. Uh, we were considering, well, we did it via Zoom. Uh, so we were considered about 100 seats uh, in quotes. Uh, that is like the, the amount of people that Zoom usually allows uh, in, a, in a normal uh, video call. Uh, and we had 1,500 uh, people registered for the course, so we need to move. The, uh, we need to move uh, well to change the strategy, and we um, uh, paid for the webinar part of Zoom, so we could have uh, more people. So we paid for 500 people, um, uh, and we had about 420 regular people going. These were six sessions online. Into, uh, uh, into weeks, during two weeks. Uh, uh, again, the talks were offered by you, <laughs> people from our institute, so thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this more than once, but uh, I, I really, really want to thank all of you because we wouldn't be able to do anything that we do if it weren't for, for, your, for your work, for, the, the talks you, you share with us and with the people, uh, uh, the times that you have been in the different online events uh, online this year. Also, this Curso de Astronomía is very important and we are going to do it this year again, but in a different way. And, and we are inviting you to do it. I'm going to talk about more, more about that later on. Uh, um, okay, uh, then I'm going to move on because I still have a few slides. Uh, uh, then we, the, the, the very, the most difficult thing in, in my head was to move like the very large events like Noche de las Estrellas online. So what we decided to do uh, was to do a, a big 27 almost continuous e e event. Uh, and, it, and I think it worked well. We partnered with other, well, other people, uh, with uh, other groups, astronomy groups, especially with one that is based in, in uh, oh my God, I just forgot where it's based, but it's in South America, I'm sorry. I forgot, I think it's Peru, uh, which called, is called Astronomía en tu bolsillo, uh, which is a very large Facebook page uh, that now has become basically a media uh, enterprise because they have an online magazine and they have a brand, uh, uh, but they have over 1 million followers on Facebook. Um, so we partnered with them and about half of the audience of Noche de las Estrellas came from their page, uh, which is import an important thing because it's a, it's a very international audience. Uh, they are followed in, in many places where they speak Spanish from the United States to Chile and Argentina going through all of the Americas and Spain. Uh, so uh, so that, that was important. Uh, and we did gain a little bit of followers from, from sharing with them. Uh, but even if we don't get the followers, uh, people know about us via these other pages. And this is also important. Uh, 
Um, uh, and if, if I make a summary of all, all the other online events that I'm not mentioning there, like the astronomy news, astronomy talks, activities for children, and other special events, we, we have had 63 from March to March, not counting the others that are in other bullets in this slide. Uh, and then we have the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction and the Messier Marathon this uh, already in 2021, uh, and teacher training sessions. Uh, I'm, I'm not mentioning more about these three because I'm, I have separate slides for them. Um, uh, and we also continue uh, our relationship with the media. And, and I think uh, actually it has increased during the, this pandemic months. Um, we released uh, for 14 press releases, uh, March to March. Uh, and, and I was 50 times in the media, uh, approximately. Uh, th this ranges from like five minute interviews, just like announcing the next Viernes Astronomia to full 60 minute interviews where I usually uh, are, uh, I'm, I'm asked to talk about the topic. It is usually like, like uh, what are the astronomy events of this year or talk about the, the, the next eclipse or lunar eclipse or something like that. Um, uh, and with this, uh, I, I didn't put in the slide, but I have to mention a big thanks to Vinculación, especially Laura Sillas, because she helps organize about half of these media appearances. And the other half come from um, uh, connections that I have made uh, during uh, my time here, especially this year. So this has actually increased during the pandemic. Uh, so it's, uh, it's part in the, in the good part. It's part of the good part. Uh, OK. Uh, I'm going to mention specifically the Noticias Astronomicas because I, I think that the, the this astronomy news uh, uh, monthly event uh, is a good showcase for local research. And I always say lo when I say local is your research, the research done by academics in our institute. Uh, uh, it, it is like I said before, it is an online event now, a monthly online event now, uh, and since September I've started to feature uh, uh, research results from IRIA. I tried to do that before, but uh, doing it on a monthly basis, I usually only focused on current astronomy events uh, uh, and also space exploration landmarks because that, those are very popular. Uh, but I also wanted to showcase what people is doing here in IRIA. And this Noticia Astronomicas, I think, has become a very good place to talk about uh, what you are doing. Uh, and, and it's a good complement uh, with the Viernes Astronomia because the Viernes Astronomia uh, is like the formal outreach talk. Um, uh, with, with, that's why it's the main event. Uh, but here is like more informal uh, where you can interact more with the audience, like, like um, quick interaction, I mean. Uh, and and this uh, in the Noticias Astronomicas, uh, I don't prepare slides, but I show a lot of images, and it's like more interactive because I show the the, the browser page, uh, and I tell people if you want to know more about this, go to this web page, and and you can auto translate it, and it's reasonably good. Or I show them places where they can read things in Spanish, uh, because of course most of the astronomy news are in English. Um, but you can find some things in Spanish. Uh, so I tell people that, and, and, and I, there, there's, there has been like a loyal audience from different parts of the country and from different uh, countries as well. Um, it's not a large audience, but, but, it's, but it's loyal. Uh, and that's also important uh, because loyal audience means that you will always have some people listening to you. Uh, um, okay. Uh, and this year, uh, I, I want to showcase students' work. We've already done this in the first month. Uh, I invited Donahi, and in the second one, in the second month in February, I invited um, uh, Jairo. In in well, no, in the first month, I didn't do this because it was just after the holidays, the, the, the winter holidays. So I didn't invite anyone. I'm sorry. But in February, I invited Donahi, and in March, I invited Jairo, and in April, it's going to be Kike. And the rest of the months are open. So all of the students hearing this, if you want to uh, uh, be showcased in the uh, Notice Astronomicas, 
we are you are invited to appear talk about your current work um, that has been recently published uh, but you can talk about something that you're working right now or maybe something you you have already done in the past uh, like not not that recently like in the in the past couple of years or something um, but but I think it's a good place to showcase what uh, what we are doing as, a, as an institute. And it's also a good candidate to stay uh, on uh, after the return to in-person activities, because this, this, uh, uh, this, this was first done, this sprung up out of, uh, out of necessity to do online events, uh, but we didn't do this before the pandemic. Um, so, so this is something that, that was born online uh, so uh, I think that, uh, and I'm going to start with the what I'm what, with what I'm going to say now, and and with the next couple of well, the, from the end, to the end of this talk, uh, I want you to think that well, I want you to I want actually I want to convince you, but okay, <laughs> I want to convince you that we need to continue doing online only events even when in person activities resume. Uh, this one is a very good example because it was born online and there's no, no similar event in person. Uh, so because the, 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 this, is, this was uh, created online and the format works because it is online. Um, so uh, I think that, uh, like I have told you before, and I'm going to say more about this later, uh, the audience that we have created during the pandemic is a different audience than the one that would come to in-person activities, not only because of geography, uh, uh, that is because they are not here in Morelia, but also because it, it is composed differently. Uh, this, this is different people. Again, people that connect to online events is not, not the same that people that goes to in-person events, even, even if they are in the same city. Uh, this is a little bit like like when when I, I have asked myself now that uh, here in Morelia places like bars and cinemas are open and, and, are, and are working. That's why I ask. I mean, it's similar that when I ask myself why people are packing up bars, but cinemas are are pretty much uh, empty or half empty uh, because it's different people. Uh, 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 the people that would go to the bars is not the same people that would go to the cinema. Uh, and also there is a bit of about um, uh, fears of air conditionings and things like that. Uh, but those things are also in, in closed bars and closed bars are also packed, uh, at least judging by, by the amount of people congregated at the door. <laughs> uh, just to clarify, I haven't been to bars <laughs> during the pandemic. Just to clarify, <laughs> uh, and um, okay, that 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 was weird. Let, let me go back. <laughs> so I I don't know if you can tell, but I, I am more nervous down now that I have been in all the online things that I have done this year. I don't know why, but I'm so nervous right now. Okay, <laughs> let let me let me go on, um, and and let me resume because because I think the time is starting to to end and. I have more to say. Uh, I'm going to move on. There. It, that's better. Um, OK, so this is, uh, this is a very difficult thing to me measure. So this slide is both in the good and the bad uh, parts, because uh, we try to, uh, there, there is a measurement, uh, which in Spanish is personas atendidas. The, the best translation I could find is people in attendance uh, to, to in-person activities. But how to measure that in online events? Uh, we found that if we count only the total number of views, uh, a video, that, I mean, an online transmission that later stays as a video in the social media, um, the, the total number of views, it does not represent well uh, what would be uh, people in attendance to an in-person event because uh, the total views count uh, views that last three seconds. So if you uh, click on a video, or even if it auto plays, uh, because many many people have autoplay on in their news feeds, 
uh, in different social media. Uh, if it auto plays for longer than three seconds, it counts as a view. So you don't really know if you count the number of views, how many people really watched a significant portion of your video. Uh, so we had a difficult time measuring this. And I'm going to tell you in, in, a, in, a, in, in a later slide how we did this. But I just want to tell you, I just want you to see how basically uh, uh, sort of exponentially distributed is, is this. We had one very viral event, which was the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. Uh, and we estimate about 250,000, well, about 248,000 people in attendance. This is completely unusual. Uh, it was very good and we were very happy about it, but it's not common. It's very unusual, and, and this is higher than, than many uh, well-known YouTubers, not like the big ones, uh, but like many well-known YouTubers. This is more than that. They, uh, uh, for, for people like, like I, I know people that, that live off social media, what we would call influencers, um, that don't have this amount of people constantly. Uh, so this was really a viral thing. I'm going to talk more about this later on. Uh, but I, I, want, I want you to see that if we take that out, uh, we would have about 50,000 people in attendance in our events. Uh, this table includes some in-person activities because this was done for 2020. Uh, but if we take them, if we take those out, like for example, uh, Tsin Sunsan, which is what which was in person. Um, uh, yeah, which is the big one here. It's still about 40 something thousand, which I think it's a good number. And it's similar to the numbers we had for 2019 for people in attendance, if you sum up all the outreach activities we had. So I think uh, um, this helps illustrate that we have done uh, reasonably well in translating what we did in person to the online world. Um, uh, and then we had this very, very unusual thing about the conjunction and it, it explodes, but okay. Uh, so this is, the, uh, the, this is that, the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction, it really became viral. Uh, and there were several things that helped make it viral. First of all, we were shared by big media. Uh, uh, our, we we uh, published a press release uh, prior the, uh, of the event talking about the event and, uh, and talking uh, and inviting people to join our online transmissions. We, we announced two of them, uh, but we actually did three uh, in subsequent days. And the last one was the main one on the 21st of December. Uh, but we were shared by very, very big media like Aristega Noticias, El Universal, El Heraldo de, Mexi El Heraldo de Mexico, and in Infobae, which are seen by a lot of people. So that helped a lot. Um, so we have a, about 1, 1.5 million views in total. Uh, uh, this is really big. Uh, and again, very, very unusual. Uh, and we estimate about 10% of that would be people in attendance. How we measure that? Let me, let me, uh, I have, I, I thought I, okay. Let me talk about the, 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 this table and then I tell you how we measure that people in attendance. Um, this is a way also to measure uh, how things worked. Uh, so this is a table that shows the many, the, the how many people follow or like our our social media pages uh, in uh, for different dates. It's not regular because I have to be honest, it's not regular because because I forget to do it regularly. Uh, so so I record the date when I remember I have to do it. Uh, which is usually when I have to present a report. So that's why it's not regular. But I think it's, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's a good illustration of how it, it has uh, grow, uh, grown. So at the beginning of the pandemic, I have a date here in, in uh, more or less mid-April last year, we had 7,000 people, almost 8,000 people likes in Facebook. And now we have about 20,000. Uh, there was a big jump between November and January here, which is basically December, which is the, the conjunction. It helped a lot. We gained about uh, uh, more or less 3,000 people in, in likes, but, but 
uh, almost 10,000 people in followers, which is very important because it's more important how many people follow uh, follows you uh, than how many people likes you because the people that follows you are shown your stuff, your 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 posts. They are shown uh, your post in their newsfeed, uh, and uh, if they select that, they are notified when you go online or they are notified when you post something. Uh, uh, so th this is important for visibility uh, and visibility is everything in social media. Uh, uh, Instagram has also grown a lot from 700 in the beginning of the pandemic to almost double now. Uh, and Twitter, I'm mostly proud of Twitter because Twitter is a very difficult social media uh, and it has grown uh, from about 600 to about 1200 double uh, and YouTube YouTube is, is also something that uh, I didn't expect the growth it had uh, we didn't really post anything on YouTube until more or less uh, uh, the, the 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 end of of the last of the second to last semester um, so more or less until May June we started reposting things on YouTube we weren't focusing on YouTube because our uh, most of our followers were on Facebook, uh, uh, but uh, uh, they made a case to me, and they are right, that some people really don't want to have social media accounts, and you don't need an account to watch a YouTube video. So, uh, so they are right, and we started doing this on YouTube, and also with StreamYard, like I said before, we we could start uh, transmitting simultaneously on YouTube. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit quicker because it's uh, it's almost uh, the hour. Uh, so th there was there was a, a, an important jump in the uh, months between May and November uh, because we started moving the, the uh, YouTube more and uploading videos and transmitting on YouTube. Uh, but the but the big one, the big increase, uh, was again because of the conjunction, and this has helped a lot because. The, for, of these people, this is audience that that uh, keeps watching you, uh, but also because it was because of a very specific event. Uh, so people like you and then and then or follow you, and then they realize that you are not going to do an event like the one you did in this case the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction every week or every month. So they unfollow you. So we we have we've had a few unfollows on YouTube because of that. Uh, but it's it's mostly stayed, and it shows in the numbers. Uh, in the in like in specific videos, it, it shows that people that liked us because of the conjunction uh, is still watching us now. Um, okay, so now I'm I'm going to some of the bad stuff. Uh, uh, the first of of them is what I mentioned earlier about uh, school visits and in general. Uh, uh serving schools uh this has been very difficult we try to invite schools uh to have online talks with us some of them have uh, uh agreed and we have uh, well th there has been in this year seven online talks but we have tried to do much more than this we we were uh serving uh at least two different schools every month before the pandemic sometimes more uh and and this uh, and this ha has been very very difficult during the pandemic. The conclusion we reached, uh, I mean, what why this is happening, is because uh, we feel that, in one hand, most schools just don't want another Zoom talk. Yeah, they, they don't want another Zoom call to have a a, a talk. You know, so so they just don't they, they don't want it. They, they are tired of Zoom and, and video calling and online classes in general. Uh, and the other part is that some schools don't even do this. Uh, some, some schools, particularly in, in, in public schools, they send the, the material they have, the children have to do to the parents via WhatsApp. And then they, uh, a week later, they receive the material that the parents send them and that's it. So we tried uh, offering this type of thing to the schools. Uh, in which we would set up a, a q a session via whatsapp with schools uh, and we recorded uh, some of the children activities we had we recorded them on video 
on short videos. So we would send those, well, we sent the links on YouTube to, to people so the children could watch them at any time, like not on a specific time, because we realized that in many families, they share a computer or they do things on their phones, uh, like schoolwork on their phones. So uh, we, we tried this different approach and it didn't work. Uh, so, uh, thanks to connections that, that Rafa has, uh, we managed to agree uh, to a teacher's training full program uh, that we're going to do. Uh, well, we, we already started doing it for 2021. So, we're, we are doing 12 sessions. We started in March, uh, in the beginning of this month. We already had two of them, and we are going to go to the, until December. Uh, and this is for um, I think I, I have it. Okay, I have it in this slide. I'm going to finish talking about this and I'm coming back. Uh, we have a, a, about 16 teachers and it's a mixture mixture of teachers uh, uh, focused on children with disabilities, but also what they call outstanding children. So uh, uh, it's kind of, it, uh, I, I try, I present the, the uh, some theory about the activity I'm going to do and then uh, uh, I do the activity with the teachers on on a on a on a video call, uh, and then I try to to give hints and resources for the teachers who have out, outside uh, outstanding children, but also uh, try to interact with them so they tell me how they can uh, modify the activity and adapt it to uh, children with disabilities. Uh, so this is. Uh, uh, I, this, is, this is a good thing because we are now serving schools in a different way. Uh, we are uh, doing teacher training for, uh, so, so they themselves can transmit uh, uh, what we are doing uh, to their children, uh, either online or whenever they meet in person again. Uh, and this will be, a, uh, there's a possible uh, extension to this for the whole state. Uh, this is being discussed and and we, well, I hope it, it happens. Let me go back. Uh, the other bad uh, or difficult thing that I, that I wanna talk about is this people in attendance measurement, which is very, really difficult to do uh, online. And the indicator we use is so an indicator that Facebook gives, which is called the unique 60 second views indicator. Uh, this one, uh, the, uh, this indicator tells us how many uh, people, how many unique accounts, which is important, how many unique accounts watched uh, the, the video for at least 60 seconds in one go. Uh, so we decided to take this indicator as the people in attendance indicator, because it, it gives us a better understanding of how many people uh, watched large portions of the video. If you stay for one minute, you are, you are likely to stay for many minutes. Uh, and, and there is actually, uh, you can actually measure that, uh, uh, but you cannot measure it in bulk. You have to go video to video. So uh, I have gone to, to see this video by video and people that watch for 60 seconds usually stay to watch longer periods. Uh, so uh, the experience has been for now with this Facebook indicator that between seven and 12% of the total views of the video uh, are uh, these unique 60 second views so that we consider this number the people in attendance so we have applied this to youtube that doesn't give this indicator and in general to the rest of the media uh, and that's how i made these numbers here so uh, that's how i got this 248,000 uh, uh, number for the, the conjunction uh, when we had 1.5 million views so it's more or less about 10 percent uh, uh, which, which comes from this indicator here. Uh, so the, the, that's that's a difficult thing to do, but we have learned how to do it. Um, and it's it's not perfect, uh, uh, but it's it's it, it works, I think. Uh, and again, the audience is not the same as uh, as the in-person audience. And I put it also in the bad thing because I think it's a good and a bad thing. It's a bad thing because the people that 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 where that we were, uh, you know, that, that we were reaching with in-person uh, activities, we are not reaching them now. Uh, and that's a bad thing. Uh, but some of these people will not connect either because they can't or either because they don't want to, will not connect to online events. 
And so uh, the good the good part about this is that new people is connecting, with, which I have already said that. Okay, so to to almost end because it's almost about the hour, uh, we have. Uh, uh, apart than that our stable monthly online events, uh, we have a Papime project approved for this year, uh, which is the Curso de Astronomia Basica, but we are, the project is to move the course to Coursera. So we are going to record uh, videos uh, with the different topics of the course. Uh, we are going to generate evaluation activities and we are going to upload everything into Coursera. Uh, for that, we need you again. And I feel like the, the Uncle Sam poster saying, say, saying, I want to recruit you. <laughs> so if, if you already gave the, the, uh, a talk in the course last year or the year before, you are especially invited because you already have the material prepared. <laughs> but um, but it, even if you don't, if you want to be a part of this, uh, send, send us an email, either me or Bernardo or Rafa or the three of us. Uh, uh, send us an email because we want you. We want we want you to be a part of this. Uh, uh, we have um, uh, money for for licenciatura becas. How do you say that? Fellowship, scholarship, scholarship. Um, uh, and we have a couple of of design students that will help us with the edition and recording and all of this. Uh, so. We're, this is a good thing, uh, uh, and it's a nice project, and you are all invited to participate. Uh, okay, so conclusions. Uh, the beginning was hard and uncertain, like I said, uh, and we had to build on, on previous experiences, so that, that is important. Uh, now we have a, a more stable approach to, to this online thing, and I'm expecting that we are going to continue online things for the rest of this year, maybe more, I don't know. Uh, but I mean that only online things, that's what I meant. I'm going to continue with only online, at least for the rest of this year. Uh, that's the expectation, but if there is a change, a big change, we are ready to readapt ourselves to in-person activities. Uh, uh, we have to know the audience, the audience is not monolithic, and it changes, that is, it's different from in-person than in online, and it, it also evolves. Uh, new people come, uh, some people stop watching you or following you, uh, but also every year your audience grows. So you need to, to recapture younger audience uh, and you need to, to also keep the audience that you have interested. So you need to grow with your audience. Uh, uh, and that means evolving uh, the, the, the things with you in the long term. Uh, well, like I said, audience is different in person uh, than it is um, uh, online, with both geographically and in composition. Um, uh, one lesson is that we need to be flexible uh, because some of the things that we did and that were important for us, like uh, like schools, uh, just cannot be done online or are very difficult to do online. So we need to change the way we approach to, to this. So it was a very good idea. This was Rafa's idea to go to the teachers. Uh, so, so this has worked very well. And I, I hope that we can extend this. Um, oops, there's a typo there. <laughs> uh, the, a constant online presence is a must. I think we already know that. Know that. Uh, and we need a balance between sharing what we want to show, which is what we do as an, as an institute, what the students do, what the academics do, uh, what we consider important, and also um, uh, what is popular, which is space exploration, uh, you know, the, m many things about our solar system, and there's no one really working on our solar system in our institute, like focused only on the solar system. So uh, uh, we, we need to, to strike a balance in, in, into both things. Uh, uh, and I, I really think that we need, we need to keep doing online only uh, activities and also mixed format activities. For example, Viennese Astronomia has an, after a year has now been established as an online event. So, uh, when we go back, or we want to do it in person again. Uh, we want to to recapture the people that used to go in person and that 
are not watching the Viennes Astronomia and other activities online. We want to recapture them. But the only way to do this is doing it in person at the same time that we, that we transmit that online. Uh, so we need to find a way, that, this is something that goes for the future. Uh, we need to find a way to, to involve the online audience in, in the activities that we do in person, uh, especially do it, doing it live in live events like, like, like the Viennese Astronomia talks. So this is something for the future. Uh, and we need to keep to, to keep doing online only events. I think that Noticias Astronomicas is a good candidate for that. Uh, uh, but also the Q and A's and the online observations. Uh, they have the, the online observations, the telescope observation, have they have proved very popular. Uh, so people clearly want to see more of that. So that those are also candidates to 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 continue happening. And also events like eclipses and conjunctions and things like that. Uh, we need to 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 do those when we go back to in person. We need to do those uh, also in mixed format and an on an in person event for the people in Morelia, but also uh, online events for everyone else. Um, and and okay, this is again this is for the future. But I I really think that we need to keep on doing this because the audiences are different, um, because we now have a, a, a presence with audiences that are not here, and we need to uh, tend to these people. OK, that's it. Uh, I hope that I, I, this was interesting for you, uh, and it, it certainly has been an experience for me. Thank you very much. OK, let's, let's thank uh, René. Thank so um, we have time for maybe uh, a couple of couple of quick questions. Um, you can raise your hand or, or write it down in the chat. So I, I do have a I do have a quick question, uh, mostly yes. out of, uh, out of I'm, I'm just curious, and I, I'm not sure if you're allowed to allowed to say. But when, when there is a big when there is a big press release that where many institutions around the world uh, need to coordinate, like like yesterday's uh -huh. like yesterday's image of the black hole with, with the magnetic field. Yeah. Like how, how how early in advance uh, do you do they tell you about this? Like is it like one week before? And you you uh, when was the first time you saw the, the new image? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I get, I get what the question is. Uh, Laurent Laurent called me uh, about maybe three weeks ago and told me that he want or maybe like maybe like a month ago. Uh, and told me that this was happening sometime in March. He didn't know the exact date uh, back then. And he told me the result. He didn't show me the image, but he told me what was it. So mm -hmm. I knew about a month ago. Uh, and then I have to be honest, I was, when Laurent called me, I was in, a, in such a hurry that day that I forgot what the result was. <laughs> <laughs> and this is true, I'm not lying. Uh, but like 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 two and a half weeks ago, uh, uh, nothing happened in, in like a, like a week and a half, and I forgot about the result. Uh, but I did call Laurent and told him, "Is this happening or not?" Uh, so about two and a half weeks ago, uh, we talked again, and we, he told me again the results. Uh, and about a week ago, well, like a week and a half ago, they looped me in with the media people from EHT. Uh, so about 10, 10 to 12 days ago. Uh, so at that moment, I actually saw the image for the first time. Right. Uh, and the press release was ready. The final form of the press release was ready about a week ago uh, in English. And there was a, a Spanish translation more or less last Friday, more or less. Uh, so I made the the... Adapt the adaptations for the local release, uh, basically Monday. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, Thanks. So I see a couple of uh, hands raised. I, I don't know who yeah. was first, but uh, uh, we have Rosa and Javier. Uh, maybe maybe Rosa. Yes. Thank you. Uh, do, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Sorry. Uh, so what about the curso? the Astronomia Basica, because that looked like a very good candidate to keep online and maybe do mixed, I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we, we are moving it online. We, we moved it online on, on, on last last year. We did this via Zoom. But this year that we're doing it on Coursera is something that's going to stay online. Uh, okay. Because we, we're going to upload it to Coursera in, in kind of a flexible thing, flexible schedule thing, uh, where people can watch the videos and do the activities at any time. Uh, but uh, um, uh, but they have like th there is like a time period so they can interact with the with the uh, either you researchers or the students if they help us. Uh, but it stays online and people can rewatch the video anytime even if, they, if there, there's there's no interaction. Uh, so for later years this will stay there and we can set up dates. Uh, to do this online again. So this this basically has moved online in that sense, uh, where we are moving it online in that sense. Uh, but I think that it would be important to keep a version of the course in person, uh, because that's the people from here that wouldn't do it online. Uh, so this is something that we need to talk about. If we have the the resources, as particular, the, the main resource here is your time. The, the, the researchers and the students' time. Um, uh, so uh, I think this year is going to be this online only thing, but afterwards we, we, we may need to talk about if this can be done both in the online version and in, in, in person version. Okay, thank you, Rene. Thank you. Okay, um, and finally we okay. have a question from, from Javier. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. Uh, well, it's clear that uh, that the, the media, the, the, these big newspapers, El, El Universal, and etc., made a, a big uh, push uh, for the audience that we had. Is it possible though, that that uh, you we can in advance uh, every time there is coming something, an asteroid or an eclipse or whatever, we can make a set, sort of a, a pre-release such that we can forward it to, to, to these newspapers and then advertising our our um, our activities because it seems that this is a uh, this is the way to get in this large people audience uh, we have tried this uh, and it and it's uh, it's difficult because they take what they want uh, um, all, all of our press releases are sent to all the media uh, so, because they are sent, well, sort of, there are like, like, um, how do you, how to say this, like barriers that we have to cross. Um, the, we, I send everything to Vinculación here and they send them to the local media, but they send them to national media as well. But the national media, they usually don't take anything from the local people. They only take things from uh, Comunicación Social in Mexico City. Um, so what Laura does is they, she sends it to Comunicación Social, but sometimes they don't send to the big media the, the thing that comes to the, from the local campus, like here. Uh, so that's a barrier. Uh, so what I have been doing is talking directly to the Comunicación Social people. Uh, and sometimes I have been able to do it. For example, there was a press release about uh, a paper from Mauricio, uh, and uh, I moved that to the directly to Comunicación Social, and it got out, and it was in Milenio, and it was in, in the, some of the big ones. Uh, so, so that that had a big visibility, um, uh, but not ev not everything can go. No, I mean, sometimes I cannot send uh, every three weeks a press release to the Comunicación Social people. Uh, so I need to I need to measure very well which things I really want to go big, and, and which things can stay more local, yeah. uh, because the, the local press releases they are always taken by a few local sources. For example, El Sol de Morelia and El Sol de Zamora they always print our our things, and they have a good uh, audience, but it's local. Um, so so. Yes, I, I have made these connections with the with the people at um, Central Campus, um, but you, I, I I have learned that I need to measure very well which things I send to them and which things I I 
I better not. Mm, okay. Thanks. Good. Okay, so I think we should thank uh, Renee again, as well as the rest of the outreach department. Uh, thank so you very uh, much. Yeah, thank so I, I, I hope they keep up the good work if, during the rest of the pandemic and as we transition back to normality uh, someday. Um, Some sort of normality. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Thank you very much. So ne next week is uh, spring break. So see, see you everybody in two weeks. So. Thank you. See you.